and I'm really short, so, so you, we're all clear. Yeah. That is what it is. I, that's fine. That's fine. Sorry about that, Chris. That's, <laughs> that's not your fault. Hi, Austin. Thursday was kind of a mixed bag. I'm sure that's not uncommon in an opener, but when you evaluated on film, what, what did you see? A lot of good, a lot of bad. Uh, you know, I uh, thought we played really hard, played physical. thought that was a good and encouraging thing. thought we improved on some things um, from last season. I uh, played a lot of young guys, uh, but I think there's a lot of room for improvement, and I think that's what all from week one to week two is about. Got to tackle better, got to leverage the ball better, got to make sure that uh, we continue to limit explosive plays, which we did. We did a, a good job of short, except for one. Uh, created turnovers, which I thought was positive. Uh, brought good energy. Brought good energy. Played a lot of guys, a lot of reps. So that that was positive. Do you think that you will ever coach this team with a full complement in the secondary? <laughs> Let's hope so. Uh, you know, we're getting closer. That's all I'll say. We're getting closer. Can you specifically talk about the play of the, of the cornerbacks and the young the freshman cornerbacks? And that's obviously being thrown in the fire. I, Bill, I'm at a hard time hearing you. The cornerbacks, the freshman yep. cornerbacks, Denzel and, and Ryan in particular, how, sure. how they play given the circumstances? Well, I think that on the road in the Big Ten is a challenging uh, environment anytime. But for it to be your first game and your first game as a Buckeye and your first game as a college football player uh, compounds all those things. I thought they handled the – the pressure and the environment of that, well, I would expect uh, both of them, uh, as well as Legend, who, who played a, a fair amount, to improve as the season goes on. Uh, you, you would like to have more game experience under your belt before you're playing the teams that we're opening with, but that's the way it is. That's the schedule, so you got to go play. And how was it for you, this was your first game as the coordinator without having a position group to just oversaw the whole thing? Do you feel good about the way you called the game, about where the defense is in general right now? Yeah, I think that you always, uh, after a game, that's self-evaluation is the first thing that you do. What could you have done better? And I think that we have a, a laundry list of things that that uh, we need to do better and improve on. I would like to think that uh, in, in critical moments, we, we handled some things really well. I really would like to compliment the staff. We got some formation and personnel groups that we had not seen, and I thought they did a phenomenal job of coming up with answers and communicating that with the players and, and – uh, uh, really, Larry, Matt, and Al did a really, really good job with that, uh, both on the sideline at halftime, uh, making good adjustments. Uh, Hi, Kerry. Hi, Dave. Um, as far as tackling is concerned, how much can you work on it in practice? I imagine that's a tough balance where you want to work on tackling, but you don't want to get your guys banged up. Yeah, you have to work on it. You, you ha we have to improve, and so we have to work on it. We tackled yesterday. We'll tackle today. Uh, it's harder because... Tackling drills are different than tackling in, in real scrimmage or games. And those are where you get you run the risk of injury. When you've got 11 people, 22 people all coming toward the ball and, and people are flying around, and that, that's hard. Uh, at the same time, we, we, we do need to tackle better, so we'll continue to work on it fundamentally. And uh, worked on it, like I said yesterday, we'll work on it again today. You faced a big physical veteran offensive line last time. Same thing this week with yeah. Oregon. Um, do you expect, again, that they might throw something at you that uh, they haven't done, like kind of like Minnesota did with throwing seven linemen up there at times? Yeah, well, I, I don't know that they would do that necessarily, uh, but I think that they will have plans based on what they think are going to be the strengths of their uh, offense versus what they saw from us on Thursday night. Hi, Doug. Hey, Kerry. Um, you guys got home on a blitz right there at the end of the first half. I think blitzed two linebackers and got a sack to snuff out that last drive. I don't know. It didn't feel like you guys done did that a ton. Just generally, when bringing pressure, you you guys often have a front four that can get after it. H how do you sort of view when you might call a blitz? I think it's team? all predicated on what the offense gives you in down and distance situations. I think we have a great four man rush, and so you would prefer to do that as much as you possibly can. I think that that this was a team that would run the ball on any third down, on third and eight, they would run the ball, and so that kind of limit some of what you may do from a pressure standpoint. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think those are game plan specific more than anything, uh, Doug. Uh, right behind him, Dan. Kerry, uh, Ryan had said after the game that you, know, you guys want to play a lot of depth, but you also might need to look at do we need more continuity at certain positions. Do you, do you agree with him that, you know, kind of as the season goes along, you might need to narrow that rotation down a little bit? Well, first of all, he's a head coach, so of course I agree with him. <laughs> But I would tell you absolutely, 
you know, we're still finding our way and, and we're still figuring out exactly who the best players and the best combinations and the best situations are. And so uh, the only way to do that is to get some game experience. And so we're, we, we, we played guys, played a lot of guys who deserve to play, guys who've worked hard, got themselves prepared. And uh, we have a saying around here, some do, some don't. And so as we continue to go forward, those that do, uh, we'll do more. And, and those that don't, we'll do less. How do you strike that balance going into a game like this where, hey, we're playing Oregon. It's one of the biggest games of the year, but it's still game two. We're still learning who we are. Yeah, we, it, we have to put the best players on the field to help us win the game. And that, that is exactly the strategy that we would uh, take going forward uh, for Saturday. Terry, you've recruited a lot of corners, very talented corners. Did you ever think you'd start a true freshman no. here at Ohio State? No. Uh, what did Jim Joe do to, to earn that play? Uh, you know, he had a really good uh, spring, so we knew we had something. Uh, had a really good off season, and then he continued to play, you know, uh, all through training camp. Uh, he, he continued to line up and play man to man against some of the best receivers that you will ever see, and uh, he competes. Uh, got a lot of growth and a lot of improvement. Uh, ahead of him, but uh, we're, you know, he had a good, he had a great camp. He had a good night uh, Thursday night, and we're looking for uh, more of those in the future. Do you see him staying in that rotation if you get a full complement of cornerbacks back? I think that the kids that de that are capable uh, of playing and deserve to play, both physically and how they perform, will play. And I've always believed in that. I've always believed in. A fast, fresh player is better than a tired one. And uh, we've got good depth, and we're going to play players that can make plays. So yeah, I would expect him to be in the rotation. Uh, over here to the far right, Jeremy. Terry, with apologies to the fabulous Thunderbirds, do you think you guys are like tough enough on defense? Do you feel it as a, as a whole unit that they're mentally tough enough? Yeah. Is there, is there a way you quantify that or that you have seen it go from January to now? Yeah, I think physically, uh, I, I think it starts with a, phys a certain physicality. I think you have to be physical here because practice uh, is very physical, uh, and it's an offensive line that is, uh, that is a very physical group as well as a great physical group of running backs. Our wide receivers block well, so physically uh, you have to be tough. And I think these kids have come through some incredible situations over the last two years uh, that would, uh, I would say, speak volumes about their mental toughness. And so I, I, I have no concerns about their mental toughness. One of those guys, Court Williams, like he's obviously been through a lot more than a lot of the other guys have been. How close was he being ready to go against Minnesota? And was it just a situation where the field maybe being wet and you know inconsistent was holding him back or what? Yeah, he's, he's very close. I think he had a few setbacks along the way in, in training camp, which limited some of his reps and some of his opportunities uh, for uh, great practice reps, and, and again, that, that, that game in that environment is not necessarily when you, when you want to get your real first live bullets. And so, again, he's, he's preparing very, very well. I look forward to having him out there on the field uh, in the near future. Second one left. Steven? Terry, I think when we asked you last year about you know, maybe playing some young guys, obviously a different scenario, but you were real adamant on not playing true freshmen because when they make mistakes that corner, it leads to six points. Yep. Um, so, I don't know. When you're down seven, you're down Cam, you kind of have to play Denzel at that point. I mean, are you nervous at all? How are you feeling going into that situation? Because it's one thing to say a kid has a good camp when you know he's in the rotation versus he's the starting corner for you yeah. day one. I think I would say this. The other guys always find the freshman, right, first. And we, we had long conversations about that, that uh, the guy on the other sideline wearing a headset knows who the freshman is. So you better be ready because they're going to come after you. Uh, and, and we talked uh, long and hard about that. He doesn't strike me. As, as a player in any practice environment that has shown fear, which is, uh, which is huge. I talked to him at length about being nervous, and he said he was, which I was glad to hear, because if he said he wasn't, he'd be lying, which would be a much bigger problem. And uh, being nervous just means it's important to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was important to him to play well. So to me, it was a great opportunity for him uh, to go out there and play. But I would tell you this, when you line up and play against the guys we play against every day, that, that prepares you uh, at the corner position. You're going to get prepared because if you make a mistake here, they're going to score on you. And, uh, and so that's, that, that, I think, is the best preparation of all. Again, the touchdown they had on him, I mean, was that good coverage and just a good throw? Yes. Okay. You know, we would like there, – there was one uh, 
little push, and it was legend, which created separation. We would like to not cre create separation there, but he did have his hand in the right place at the finish of the play. But it was a good throw and a good catch, and sometimes those things happen too. We'd like to have them happen less than they did uh, Thursday night. But, yeah, I, I, w I would not uh, – I would tell you that I thought legend played well. Kerry, um, back, back in the spring, Matt Barnes said that Denzel was impressing him with kind of just how naturally corner came to him considering he hadn't played it very much in high right. school. Um, when you guys were recruiting him and evaluating him, like what, what do you look for in a guy who's like kind of mostly an offensive player and when trying to determine that he's going to play defense? Speed first. Uh, if they can run, they have a chance. And then do they block? You know, if they're playing wide receiver, are, are they afraid to go throw their face in there and knock people around? Do they compete? really hard and really well. And then, you know, there was enough corner tape on film. We weren't taking a blind leap uh, that this was a guy uh, that was going to be able to play. But he just didn't have the same level of experience as some of the other guys have had. But uh, he took right to that from the minute he walked on campus in January. And I think that helped him to have uh, that extended time uh, in January, February, March, preparing himself for spring ball and then having a good spring. As you guys are still kind of you know, working through the, the guys you can rely on. Um, how much more difficult is that when you're playing an opponent like Minnesota who's, like, making you use your goal line front at the 50-yard line? Yeah, I, I mean, I thought that they did a nice job of, of, of changing personnel groups and, and giving us things that we had not seen before and all that kind of stuff. And I thought I, it took some time to get adjusted to and, and get the right guys on the field for the jobs that they had at hand. Uh, I think the flow of the game, that makes it a little bit more difficult if you're coming on and off the field, on and off the field, than if you're lined up and you're playing and you get five, six, seven snaps in a row as opposed to run to the sideline, come back in for the next play, go back out. Those are hard things, but they're necessary things when people change personnel groups like that. Uh, Tom Vincent starting over Haskell Garrett at the start of the game the other night. I guess just w what kind of went into the thought process on that rotation on the interior defensive line, and you expect that to be how it plays out? I think that, first of all, Coach Jay is 100% in charge of the personnel in his group, as are all of the position coaches. I think that uh, rotation is important for all of us and figuring out how those things go. And I also think the length of training camp and amount of snaps guys were able to take based on injury or things that helped them out. All of those things made a difference. But I would tell you that I thought Teron also had a very, very good camp and uh, had, uh, had, had worked himself into a great spot and earned that opportunity. What did you guys like about Tommy Eichberger so much that put him in the spot to start? Well, he's smart. Uh, got us lined up in the right calls. He had taken a ton of snaps in camp. Uh, and he could. Uh, he's a physical kid for a physical game. And that's what that was. And so he, he was the right guy for that for that ball game. One final question. Stay real legend. Yeah. yeah, a couple of quickies. Hi, Terry. Terry. How you doing, man? Great, when, thanks. When you looked up on that uh, second and two, I'm not going to need to give you specifics. Say you all had gotten the interception and got called back and stuff. Second and two, you line up, and there's four linebackers left, as the quarterback's looking at, left of the quarterback, left of the center there. Uh, when you watch that on video, do you cringe? I mean, what, 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 what was just sort of – was that just a comedy of errors or just a – the way they flowed those guys in and out, those seven jumbo, super jumbo personnel, did it get you, you know what I mean? At that point in the game, it's kind of a critical moment. Just what did y'all decipher from that? Well, I, what I would tell you is that the, the volume of formations and changes they made with those personnel groups were challenging for our guys in the midst of the battle. And to go from a first down with this personnel group to a second down, and, and frankly, they were running their guys on late, and we're trying to get the right guys based on who are they putting in on the field and lined up with a call. And so I'll take full responsibility for any, any of those situations that were challenging for our players um, based on stuff that they had not been exposed to and having to get lined up and try to play hard and play fast. And that was very challenging. Uh, the other thing, give me, give me that play in spring or, or preseason where Denzel Burke you know, just you just made a mental note of it. Hey, this guy, he can play. Yeah, you know, when, when he lines up and he goes against Chris and, and, and you see that, because uh, Chris and Garrett can do so many things to any defensive back in one-on-one -on -one situations and one-on-one -on -one environments. Uh, when he lines up there against those two guys and he's able 
to handle it, and he's he's reasonably unflappable, even if they beat him. Uh, that that's when you I, I wouldn't say there was a play. He's he got his hands on a lot of balls the first time we scrimmaged. We had a lot of PBUs and he had a bunch of them. And uh, but I think that it was there was it's the day in and day out of the lack of fear of going against the very very best players and the ability to frankly to compete with them. And he does a good job. Do you look at him differently now than you did a week ago since he's been in? Since he played competently, I mean, at least competently, I mean, do you, do you have a different feel about him now? Well, I think, no, I exp- I'll be honest with you, I expected him to play well. Uh, I, I think that it would have been disappointing had he not. And so I, I don't think I look at him any differently. I'm trying to figure out how to help him get better for this week. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, you guys have a good day. Thank you.